Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be looking at some fights that happened in Japan with good judo black belts against jujitsu black belts. And uh, the results are quite mixed, to be honest. And uh, it's uh, quite eye opening because first you will see that these are the same art, just different expressions, different priorities. This word is key priorities. When you go to jiu-jitsu, your priority is different than if you go to judo. I know the arms race has been quite fast in the last two decades, uh, leg locks, and now a lot of people are focusing again on judo with the gi and without the gi. And uh, it's not to say that you know it's to be better in uh, against judo players or vice versa. No, uh, when you have priorities. You're not going to be able to perfect it like someone who has the only priority of doing judo, let's say. So here is the first fight is Komuro against uh, Marco Souza. So you see a quick dive to the leg. Uh, a much bigger guy, so he, it's very easy to take them down. Um, however, it, it should not come from a weak point, meaning lack of grip uh, skills or lack of upper body takedowns it sh it should be a part of your arsenal in my opinion but uh, it should not be your only arsenal when it comes to takedowns even for a jiu-jitsu black belt and i'll get to that in a minute so um you should watch this fight in my opinion one of the reasons why it should not be your only throw is because you have to deal with all of this after the throw now if your specialty is leg entanglement and leg locks that's another conversation, but again, it should not be your only uh, arsenal. So, uh, I highly recommend you go to uh, Comlock's channel and watch the fight in its entirety. It's a very good fight, you know, for a very small man. I think he did really good. And finally, here um, he puts him on the defensive and gets the arm and uh, wins by submission. So, uh, it's a really nice fight. I suggest you go and watch it. Uh, there's another one, let's see it here, and it ends quite quickly. I, again, a much larger black belt, uh, pulls guard, and then here he wants to go into the deep half guard. Notice he gets the underhook, trying to get the leg also. He's trying to sweep him so he can get on top. And now here, notice, because he has the underhook, uh, Komuro has the overhook which easily traps him in a very classical trap, which is the knee hold or Hiza Gatame. So he was going for an underhook so he can sweep, you know, the deep half guard uh, game. Um, but it did give him access to the shoulder and the elbow, and it was an easy trap to lay uh, for Koji. And uh, again, Go back to the classics, go back to the names, go back to the uh, list of techniques laid out by the Kodokan, and you'll see a lot that are not being used, even in Judo. So it can be quite a surprise when you actually employ them. Look at the size difference. And still he got the fight. It's what, It was like a one-minute fight only. And now here against another black belt. And here you see the importance of good grip fighting and upper body throws because they will take away so much work off of your shoulders uh, on the ground you see he just gets immediate access to the arm and puts him in that deer in a headlight moment black belt or not just gets the submission almost immediately so if i want to take away anything from you know these fights is Obviously, your ground game has to be good, regardless if you train judo or jiu-jitsu. But also, when it comes to the uh, throws, in my opinion, you should have something that targets the entire body. Either you want full access to the legs if you have good leg lock games. That's good too, especially in today's era. But also, you want something that can ha give you access immediately to the upper body once the fight goes down. Here you see... Look, all he has to do is just go for a pin or an arm lock. And these 
it, it looks simple. Trust me, it looks simple, but it is not. This is probably the first throw you will learn, but the last throw you will master, in my opinion. And it is very devastating for all purposes, but also for, you know, to go to the ground. And I'm not saying leg grabs are bad or uh, they should not be, or the IGF is right. No, absolutely not. But having access to the legs and also the upper body is key if you want to you know be that middleman for example in judo it's not a lot of people are good on the ground a lot of people even in japan they will tell you i don't like neiwaza i don't want to train it i just want to grip fight and throw and that's the case with a lot of uh, people that i've met there and uh People like Koji Komuro and Kashiwazaki, unfortunately, are a rarity. A lot of people just go do jujitsu in Japan, and it is becoming very, very popular there. And uh, of course, I can see why its relationship with MMA, the no gi, etc. But you know, to to have a little take from all of this is that it is unpredictable. You can always have mixed fights, mixed results. Just here in France, the Neiwaza Championship, a lot of judo black belts are on the podium, even though jiu-jitsu guys are allowed to go and compete in it. Uh, personally, I don't, in my opinion, it should just be kept as judo, you know, just to keep it simple. But uh, because if you train judo here, you're not allowed to go and f- compete in jiu-jitsu, which is, you know, it should be at least both ways. So, uh, now here's the thing with priorities if your ground is the ground your priority it is very complex it takes years and years and years the amount of variations and details trust me i i understand why so many of them don't even know one throw i i really do know that but um if a judo guy is very good in jujitsu or sorry on the ground it doesn't mean that he can rival the the jujitsu black belts and vice versa now i see a lot of you know, judo becoming very popular in jiu-jitsu, but does that mean that they will rival us and uh, and it's going to be this complete grappling art? No, again, because of your priorities. Your priorities are going to severely limit you to becoming this, you know, throwing machine because, you know, in order to be very good at throwing, you need years and years and years and being, you know, your main priority and also competing. The only guys I see doing great and teaching well are already judo black belts and have competed for a very long time and then transitioned to jiu-jitsu or from wrestling to jiu-jitsu but only doing jiu-jitsu and expecting to be this monster in throws it's not going to happen but i highly encourage a lot of you to really target the upper body when throwing with a jacket or without a jacket and uh, the results will forever be mixed. It's the same art at, at the end of the day. So if you have anything to add, please let me know down below. This was Shadi, and thank you for listening.